Jesus, we do not want the rights to this music. Hallelujah. We thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. Yes, it gives us strength from day to day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it will never, ever, ever lose its power. The blood still works, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It still works. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour, if you call on Jesus, he will answer you. Hallelujah, yeah. Lord. We thank you. If you call on him in the morning, hallelujah, he will answer you yeah. in the new day. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. When you're feeling all alone, hallelujah, if you feel like you're in despair and no hope, call on Jesus and he will answer you. Lord, we bless your name today. We honor you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We honor you today as the Lord of our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for being so good to us. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. 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 We're not worthy, oh God, but you grant it to us daily. And we thank you for it, Lord God. When we find ourselves in a messed up place because of our own actions, oh God, that's when your grace steps in. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it carries us. Hallelujah through, Lord God. We thank you for your grace. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for your mercies that are renewed daily. Hallelujah. We're operating on new grace on today. New mercies. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness yes. towards us, oh God. Hallelujah. What a faithful God you are. And we bless your holy name on today, Lord God. We ask that you would bless this service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the hearers of your word. Let that word penetrate our hearts, Lord God, and let it do a new thing within yes. us, oh God. Let it change us. Let it, ref let it refresh us and renew us, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, let it make us and mold us. Oh Lord God, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For making us new in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For once we committed our lives unto you and submitted, Lord God, and we began to walk in the newness of life. Lord God, you gave us a new name. Oh, Lord, I thank you for my new name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I love you so much. And I praise you, Lord God, for you alone are worthy. Hallelujah. And there is none like you in the heavens or in the earth. You are great and greatly to be praised. And I humbly bow down before you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, I thank you for your presence on today. Thank you, Lord God. I honor you as my mother and my father. Thank you. Yes, you are, Lord God. You know how to cradle me in your arms. Hallelujah. You know how to nurture me. Hallelujah. You know how to say, I love you, my child. Hallelujah. Exactly when I need it, Lord God. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name. Hallelujah. For you are good. Hallelujah. You, and greatly to be praised. Lord, I thank you. Bless this service. As you know how, Lord God, you know what we need. Hallelujah. Give us exactly that in your precious name. Lord God, and we'll be so careful to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 4, starting at verse number 21. Thank you, Lord. And the word reads, I am sure that you have heard about him. And this is the easy version. I am sure that you have heard about him properly. People taught you the true message that comes from Jesus. They taught you to change the way that you live. You must put away the nature that you had before. That old nature deceived you. As a result, you wanted to do things that would destroy you. Instead, let God's spirit make you Think in a new way. Take up the new nature that God has prepared for you. That nature is like God's own nature. That Then you will live in a truly good way that pleases God. Amen. Once we take on the nature of God and we are filled with his Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live this life. Amen. He says that you will live a truly good way 
and that will please God. Thank you, Lord. That's talking about our new identity. Once we take on Christ, we are new creatures. We are no longer the same, yes. but we have become new. And I want to tell you that who we are to God is more important than anything we can do for God. Hallelujah. He Amen. wants us. He loves us. Let me say that again. He wants us yes. and he loves us. Yes, he does. Let me say that to you to Facebook today. He wants you, you. and he loves you. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. He is more concerned about you than he is than what you can do for him. Hallelujah. Even though those things are great, he wants you and he loves you. Lord, I bless yes. your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and worthy to be praised, church. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody got a hallelujah? Oh, yes, oh God. Anybody got a praise? Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. God is so good. We thank God for this being Mother's Day. Yes, Lord. Amen. I am a mother. Praise God. Amen. It is not my identity. It is a role that I play. Amen. I'm so grateful that God gave me that position, that role. We do not own the right to this song. Hallelujah. But he deserves all the praise and all the glory it belongs to him. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you.
Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As we prepare, hallelujah, to bring up our pastor, Lord God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Can we just give him a few more moments of worship? Hallelujah. You, just think about who he is in your life. Hallelujah. How he saved you. How he brought you out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. How he sustained you day after day. How he kept you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. How he wrapped you in the cradle of his arms and he loved on you. Hallelujah. And he revealed himself unto you. Oh, God, we bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, we don't Jesus. hold the rights to this music. Come on, just lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Begin to think about how good he is to you and for you. Amen. Think about his loving kindness. His tender mercy. Lord, we bless you today. Hallelujah. To those that may be watching on Facebook, amen. We welcome you to our service. Amen. Those that's in the building, amen. How many came to just worship the Lord today? Hallelujah. You may have already been in worship today, amen. This is our time where we come and we meet the Lord and we declare that there is power. What in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. There is power in that name. Power to heal. Power to set free. Power to deliver. Power to make us whole again. Hallelujah. To break every chain. Break every chain. Not just some chains. But break every chain. Chains of witchcraft and chains of bondage, chains of addiction, and chains of trauma, broken, fractured relationships. How many know the Lord has come to break the chains from off of us today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're going through anything today, amen, you've come to the right place. You've tuned in to the right broadcast. Amen. Father, we bless your name today. We come before you humbly submitting our will and our way to you today. Father, have thine O way in this service, O God. Father, please come in the room. Somebody declare, Lord, we need you to come in the room today, hallelujah. Make your bold with us today, hallelujah. We welcome the personage of Jesus Christ today, hallelujah. We welcome your presence in this house, O God, of worship. Father, take the walls up, hallelujah. Because when we worship you, it should be unlimited. Hallelujah. Father, let, amen, our, our spirit connect with your spirit today. Hallelujah. Our spirit man, let it connect with the spiritual man of Jesus Christ today. Father, we thank you. We honor your presence, oh God. We honor this day it being Mother's Day. And Father, oh God, those that have mothers still with them, we give you praise. Mothers that have gone on to be with you, Lord, we give you praise. Father, mother figures and mother... Amen. People that have come and mentored other children. And Father, we just thank you for having, amen, a knowledge of a, a mother that have birthed us and given us life, amen, and sustainability. Lord, we honor that. We don't take it for granted. Father, we bless your name today. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Have your way in this service, oh God. We love you. And we're going to give you the praise. Hallelujah. Can somebody just put your hands together and praise him today? Come on, tell him thank you for what he's done. 
Come on, tell him, thank you for what he's going to do. Lord, I thank you for what you've done already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for breaking chains from off of my neck. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody thank him for breaking chains from off of your life. Hallelujah. You haven't always been where you are now. Hallelujah. You ought to thank him for bringing you a mighty long way. Hallelujah. Father, you are good to us. Better than we could ever be to ourselves. Father, we glorify you. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give your name the reverence that you deserve. Hallelujah. I hear chains falling off. The psalmist said in the song, Hallelujah, chains of yesterday that you don't have to take into your tomorrow. In the name, I mean, no, you can leave them at the altar, leave them at the door. Every chain that had you bound. How I many know it don't have to keep you keep you bound? Hallelujah. You can get rid of it. Hallelujah. Even those those chains of unforgiveness and sin. Your Bible says he throws them where? In the sea of unforgetfulness to remember them no more. And for that, I'm grateful. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Hallelujah. One more time, give the Lord just a reverence of praise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our visitors. Amen. My good friend. Amen. Uh, we call him Iron Mike. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you may have your seats. In the name of the Lord, thank you again for being in this Mother's Day service. Amen. And those that may be watching on Facebook, amen. We, amen, invite you, amen, to stay tuned and to uh, pray for us that we would give a word that would encourage, amen, our listening audience, amen. I do have a fond memory, amen, and I want everyone to get a fond memory in your mind. We're not going to poll the audience, but... I have a fond memory of uh, two things that I got from my mother. Amen. Before we go to the word, two things I just want to uh, remind us today that we should always try to retain something from our mother. Amen. Uh, I believe that no matter what you say, the father may have been the seed. But without a mama carrying it, amen, it wouldn't have come to fruition. How many believe that? Amen. amen. So we thank God for our, and if you're a mother in the house today, come on, let's give our mothers, amen, and women of God a hand of praise. Come on, we can do better than that, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, so one of, two of my fondest memories, amen, before we go to the word. Amen, is when I was 18 and we lived in the suburbs. Amen, mom and dad, they wanted to get us out of the city because the city was rough. It was getting violent and they wanted to give their children a better opportunity, amen, at growing up. How many know that your parents, amen, even though they're not perfect, they have your best interests at heart? Not just sometimes, all the time. But why did you give me up from adop for adoption? Because I couldn't take care of you. Hello. <laughs> did you ever think about that? But I thought, you well, love will make me say, I know what I can do and what I can't do. So I'll give you to somebody that's better qualified than me. Some, some people don't look at it like that. And this huge thing, and me and Iron Mark was talking about it Tuesday, and, and this is not a political statement, and I'm not even going to touch on it more than a couple moments. But the big thing now is Roe versus Wade. Everybody know that, right? Amen. We, we need to applaud our women and our mothers. Amen. Because without them, we would not be here. Amen. So, so I, was, I came home, and I had graduated high school, and I was working on my car had a beautiful car and the car slammed 
the hood slammed on my thumb. And Iron Mike, probably, I, I didn't say Jesus. <laughs> Guess who I called? My mama. And I ran in the house, and I have no residue from the injury of my thumb. The hood slammed on my thumb. The pain was out of this world. And the only person that I thought could help me, I didn't say daddy, I said my mama. And she took my thumb and wrapped it up in something, and I can't remember now how she took care of it, but I know I have no scars from the trauma that happened to me. And that's a blessing when you can run to mama and she can help you get rid of your pain. Amen. So I want y'all to remember one thing, two things. Get something in your mind, regardless of, of, of you didn't have a great relationship or it could have been better or it could have been worse. Get one moment. Somebody say, find one moment. Because guess what? You look long enough, you can find a moment to where she was there. And this is not the sermon today, but she was there when she needed to be there. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching, but I'm going to give you all this second fond memory. In Churchville, amen, growing up, my dad taught us to drive early on the lawnmower. We had a lot of land, so we had to cut the grass. And every time out the door, amen, when the grass was being cut or pollen was in the air, amen, I was allergic, Brother Todd, to pollen and grass. I would sneeze and I would go into a sneezing frenzy. I mean, couldn't stop. Anybody know some people that can't stop sneezing? Well, that was me. And one day, my mother must have said, enough is enough. She took me in the house, told me some scriptures, went on a fast. I mean, it's good to go on a fast sometimes. Not just for weight loss, but for spiritual gain. Hallelujah. Now, that, somebody put that in the chat. Not, you ought to go on a fast, not just for weight loss, but for spiritual gain. And I went on this fast with her. Two or three touching together in the green, he would be in the midst of, to deliver. Amen. To do whatever if two or three touch on earth in his name. And to this day, I have been delivered from grass. I could walk in there. I could, I could play in the grass. <laughs> I could put it up to, I'm not going to chance it, but I could put it up to my nose. Amen. And I would not have no reoccurrences because of the prayer of my mother. And I believe that prayer goes a long way. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So Mother Jones, I give you praise, amen, for being my mom and birthing your children. This year is kind of different we don't have our brother tommy with us so i know it's been a challenge but how many know we can't make it without the grace of god and we certainly honor amen first lady amen the mother of my children come on give her a hand of praise thank god for all of your um, wisdom and knowledge in rearing our family and making it be what it is because without you, it would not be what it is. So we thank God for that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So I want us to go to the book of John. I got a bunch of scriptures that I'm going to give you. But I want you to hang your message, amen, on John's gospel, the 19th chapter. Amen. And for your hearing, amen, I want you to write down the other scriptures. And I may even ask. Amen. Some readers like we did last week to just get the scripture that I mentioned so that this could go pretty quick. Amen. So, Father, as we pray now for the delivery of your word, we know your word is already blessed. Bless the hearers and the doers. Lord, I decrease. Take the glory. It belongs to you. Father, we can't do anything without you. And Father, it is in you that we live, we breathe, we move, we have our very being. Father, hide me behind the cross. Let you be seen. Let no glory come to me or this flesh. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. How many know that a mother will do anything for her child? A mother will tell the truth. And what? A mother will 
gonna tell a lie. <laughs> she would tell the truth and tell the, no, that wasn't my son. <laughs> but man, we have him on video. That wasn't him, I don't care what you say. Because a mother, a mother's love runs very, very deep and very, very long because she's carried that child for nine months. Amen, felt, amen, the kicking and the groaning and the yearning of wanting to be in this world that we live in. So a mother's love is uncomparable to a father's love. How many know a mother will give you her very last? But a daddy, he gonna say, you go out there and get it yourself. He might give you half, but you got to make up the rest on your own. A father's love, amen, and I think Mother's Day is probably one of the most special days of the year, Resurrection, Christmas, and Mother's Day. Amen. And Father's Day, you know, we just going to get a mug and that's it. But as we go to, <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. And I'm all right with that. Amen. Because the mother has to carry the child to term. So Exodus 2 and 9, Exodus 2 and 9. Amen. And uh, somebody get there real quick for me. Exodus 2 and 9. Amen. I want someone to get Deuteronomy 32 and 11. And when you get it, you say amen so we know who the reader is. Amen. Second Timothy 1 and 5. Second Timothy 1 and 5. Samuel 3 and 20. Or Genesis 3 and 20, I'm sorry. And that'll be good. So Exodus 2 and 9, the, who has that scripture? Go ahead and read. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. So here is the account of, and I want to just kind of walk up this hill to Golgotha. Amen. Here is the account where, amen, the people, the children of Israel are fearing from Amen. The stipulations and the hardness of Pharaoh. Amen. And so, amen. Um, the baby's mom gets thrown in the water or throws the child in the water. How many know Moses was thrown in the Nile River? How many believe that? Y'all remember that account? Moses was, that's why his name means drawn out. Because he was thrown in. And the very, uh, the very reason that she got rid of him, God made it to where she would be the one to raise him. We ain't got time to go into that account today, amen, but you can read it on your leisure, amen. She was, amen, Pharaoh's uh, handmaiden, so she did everything for the Pharaoh. Put him in the Nile, and they went on the other side of the river, and she was the one to draw her own son out of the river. Amen. You should read that account on your leisure. It's a beautiful story about how Moses became a mighty leader when he could have been eaten up by what? Alligators. <laughs> Here now, the second one. Amen. Who has that scripture? Deuteronomy 32 and 11. Amen. Okay, if you don't have it, that's fine. I have it. Amen. This is my one of my favorite scripture, how the eagle stirs up the nest. Remember that account I mentioned on yesterday or last week or a couple weeks ago? The eagle stirs the nest, has to push the eaglet out of the nest in order for the eaglet, amen, to grow and to fly. You have to be pushed. Mothers, amen, push children to greatness. Where do you think they got the pushing from? Not only do they push, not pray until something happens, but they got to make that baby what come, come out. Because you cannot stay in your mother's womb forever. You have to come out. The eaglet, the eaglet has to be pushed, amen, to the point of where he begins to fly and eat on its own because the mother can't be there for you always. You got to learn some stuff on your own. That's the strength and the character of a mother. Second Timothy 1 and 5. Second Timothy 1 and 5. Anybody? All right. This is where he calls, amen, the women, the older women, the grandmothers, amen, to assist the younger women.
because they are anointed, because they are talented, because they can do things that younger women can not do. Amen. Genesis 3 and 20. Anybody got that one? Ready? Read. This is an easy scripture for all of us today. Amen. That's why her name is called Eve. Not because it was a nice sounding name or because the it was about to be nighttime. <laughs> because she was the, the, the first woman. She was the one that birthed, amen, uh, what we call humanity, if you will. The mother of all. Amen. How many know that your mother, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what happened, what trauma Regardless if you ain't called her in 20 years, your mother, amen, is worth, amen, praise. How many believe that? Y'all kind of quiet. How many, how many believe that? She is worth everything, amen, because without our mothers, we would not be here. And I want to say this, there are some, even in the room, those that many are watching today, amen, your mother's gone on to be with the Lord. She's not here Amen. And you miss that missing part of worship. Me and Deke talk all the time. What I would do if my mama was here. You know what I mean? So don't take it for granted that your mother going to be here always. I was talking to uh, Pastor George Jones today for about two hours. Mother Juanita Jones, my second mom, has gone on to be with the Lord. You have no idea that pain if you have not lost a mother. You lost a father, raise your hand. Amen. If you lost a child, raise your hand. You lost a brother or sister, raise your hand. But Lord have mercy. Ain't nobody like what? Mama. Ain't nobody like mama. Amen. So we ought to hold those things close to our heart. Amen. I don't care if she cuss you out. Don't you curse her back out. I don't care if y'all didn't fell out or whatever and, and you ain't talked to her and she don't talk to you or, or live on two different sides of the street. How many know ain't nobody like mama? Am I, am I right, D? Yes. Ain't nobody like mama. Amen. And we all appreciate our mothers. Amen. One more scripture, amen, then we're going to our meat of the word today. Here's an account, amen. And I'm just giving us different characteristics of a mother. Amen. Remember I told you, mama gonna lie for you, won't she? <laughs> Many of you remember the account, amen, hold your place in the book of John. You remember the account in 1 Kings. You can write it down for your leisure, third chapter, 16 verse, amen. 10 verses or so talks about the judgment of Solomon. How many know that it takes wisdom to judge correctly? There are two women that have uh, a situation. And in this story, amen, one woman lays on her child. And during the middle of the night, the baby dies. So there's a disagreement about the baby. Uh, let, me, let me go back. Let me back up. Let's read that account. I think maybe that'll bless us. First Kings, the third chapter, because I know some are unfamiliar with this. First Kings, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell you something and you'd be like, Pastor's tripping. First Kings, three and sixteen. Hold your place in John. We're not going to be too long before you today, but 1 Kings. Third chapter, 16 verse. You there? Say amen. amen. Then came there two women that were harlots hmm, unto the king and stood before him. Everybody know what harlots are? They are streetwalkers, women of the night. And one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass that the third day after I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. Y'all with me say amen. 
And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. So here now, there are two women in this house. There's nobody else there but the child. And one of these women laid on the baby and what? The baby what? Baby, baby died. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. Somebody say switcheroo. And when I rose in the morning to give my child breast milk, that's what the King James says, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. How many know you know your child? <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. You know what your child going to do and what they will not do. And the other woman said, nay, uh, what verse D? 22. 22 says, and the other woman said, nay, but the living is my son and the dead is thy son. And this said, no, but the dead is thy son and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So this is the first account that Solomon has to figure out how to deal with this situation. How many know sometimes situations are hard to what? They're hard to deal with. Sometimes you don't know, you don't have the facts. Uh, the evidence is not clear. Somebody that tampered. Hello, what that don't just sound like this has been tampered with. Somebody that switched the babies around, you know, in the night. Because <laughs> I know my babies cry. So sometimes things just don't look the way they're supposed to look. So Samson or Solomon has to figure this out. And sometimes, guess what, y'all? We just don't make the right decision. Oh, y'all talking slow. <laughs> How many know that? We don't make the right choices. All of us have messed up a time or two. But that's where wisdom and what? Experience comes into play. Here it is. What verse? 23 says, Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. Mm. Mari, make sure you're listening to this part because, amen, as you grow up, amen, you're going to find out that if we're not in our right minds, how many know you will do some stupid thing? Amen. Y'all hear me? So here it is. The king says, what? Bring me what? A sword. Mm. How many know this sword is not for what? For battle. This sword is about to divide a child. Your, your Bible, thank you, Holy Ghost. Your Bible says that the Holy Spirit cuts what? Like a knife, like a sword, dividing what? Between flesh and the spirit. So something about the word of God that puts a difference between the natural and the spiritual. Now that's kind of deep. I ain't going to go there. Amen. But how many know the word always what? Works. When, you, when your mind can't figure it out, the word always works. Somebody say the word always works. What verse? 24 says, And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two, Lord have mercy, and give half to the one and half to the other. Now, how many in the room think that make any sense? Let me see your hand. I'm glad y'all with me. I'm glad we ain't have to put nobody in no white straitjacket. <laughs> how in the world... Is that the right type of multiplication or division <laughs> to divide the child in two? But guess what happens in this story? Now, this is not the meat of our word, but this we just eat an appetizer. Watch this. It says, you know, and the king said, bring me a sword. They brought the sword before the king. King said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman 
whose living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. She said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Hmm. Interesting story. Then the king answered and said, give her the living child. And in no way slay it. She is the mother. Because how many know the mother going to make sure the child lives? She knows what's best for the child. Because sometimes knowledge is acquired through experience and through pain. Boy, I feel like counseling today. Amen. Anybody hear that? How many know that we all need counseling from what? The Holy Spirit. Amen. But there's nothing like wise counsel from a mother. Hallelujah. She says in her wisdom, hallelujah, and in her pain. How many know sometimes, watch this, pain is what? Invisible, but I still feel it. Mm. Lord bless me, G. You don't know what I'm going through, but I, I feel it on the inside. And, 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 and nobody but the grace of God that lets me go. Can you imagine not, not functioning without your child? Brother, Brother Iron Mike, we, you know, Dr. Joseph Joy's husband. I had to go sit on his couch because my grieving process of the death of my son didn't happen to like five or six years after he died. Had to be strong for my crew, my family, for our church family. But then all of a sudden, the pain of my loss started coming out everywhere. Every sermon, every child, every store, I'm talking about what? My pain. But just because I can't see your pain, baby, don't believe I'm not hurting. Mm. And I know we hurt different, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hurt different. Hallelujah. We heal different. Amen. Mm, somebody write that down. We hurt different and we heal different. What verse? 28. 28 says, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged. I'm almost to John. He says, and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So guess what? The, the wise part of the story is not the baby's life. The, the gist of this message is you got to use wisdom in everything you do. Hallelujah. And a mother, amen, I would rather, hallelujah, give my baby to this one, even though it's foolery, because at least the what? Baby is alive. The baby got a chance. Hallelujah. But this other woman, because remember, they both was what? Streetwalker. Mm, how many know we got to come out of darkness Amen. into the marvelous light? Hallelujah. You can read the rest of that in your leisure. Let's go, amen, to the gist of our message today. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Here now we are moving up to Pentecost. Hallelujah. We're in that time still. Just past resurrection. Can you imagine, help me out, Brother Caleb. Can you imagine um, the feeling that Mary had when Jesus was on the cross? All of the anguish, all of the pain, all of the struggle. Remember, he died for the sins of humanity. Hallelujah. I feel my preacher man creeping up, Brother Mike. Hallelujah. How many know Jesus died for yours and my sin? Hallelujah. He died for sins that we'll do tomorrow. And he, he died for sins that I've done 20 years ago. But the one thing about the ocean that God calls it his sea of forgetfulness. Hallelujah. And, and nobody knows where it is. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Nobody knows where this sea is that we can't find that only, amen, God reveals, amen, something that he has forgotten. Hallelujah. My sin and my wrong and my, 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 my down sitting and those things that I, I did don't nobody know about. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. Hallelujah. How many know we all have what? Sin. 
And we come short of the glory of God. Don't sit in the room, hallelujah, like, amen, the Lord ain't brought you a mighty long way. Amen. For the Lord, amen, loves us so much that he'll overlook some of our mess, hallelujah. Amen, that he'll overlook and sweep it under his invisible rug and say, sooner or later, amen, they're going to come to their right mind. Anybody got that testimony? Lord, I thank you what I'm in my, my right mind. Here now in the book of John, amen, the 19th chapter, amen, say amen when you get there. The 19th chapter, Jesus, amen, does a powerful thing on the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus, after, amen, saving and setting people free. Jesus, after turning what water into wine. Jesus, after healing, amen, folk that had leprosy. Jesus, after, amen, watching people suffer with no food, amen, feeds folk with five loaves and two fists. Jesus, amen, does all these miracles. Amen. Jesus does all these things leading up. Amen. To the time that even he was betrayed by one of his boys, one of his dogs, one of his friends. Has anybody been, ever been betrayed by somebody close to you? But yet you still love them anyway. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus now, amen, knows our pain. He feels our struggle. He understands, amen, that, amen, weeping may endure for a night. But what comes in the morning? Hallelujah. The Bible declares that joy comes in the morning. Here we pick it up at the 24th fourth verse, amen, when you're there, say amen. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, amen, but cast lots for it. We're talking about the garment of Jesus. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which say of they parted his raiment among them, hallelujah, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, somebody say Mother Mary, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. How many know, amen, that women going to stand together? Hallelujah. I mean, no, that's the truth. Women going to stand together. Brothers may not speak and all that, but amen, women will stick together. Here it is, amen. Let's move a little closer to our message when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Now, it's, it's, it's too long of a delivery to go into that, amen. John, no, that wasn't his mother. Amen. But they were related. They were family. Could have been auntie. Amen. The, you know, theologians say. But this is the gist of it. Amen. Jesus knew that he was about to die. Who am I going to leave my mother in the hands of? How many know that a mother has to be handled the right way? Hallelujah. Ooh, I feel an organ in my spirit. How many know a mother has to be treated what with love and kindness? A mother has to be dealt with, amen, in, in a tender way. Amen. What does your Bible say about that proverb woman? That her, her value, her price, what? Is far above rubies. Hallelujah. So it's something about a woman. It's something about the nurturing spirit. It's something about the value she has, amen, on her children. And I would attest, hallelujah, I'm going to go out on the record I'm going to go out on a thin line, not between love and hate. Hey, thank you, Martin. But I'm going to go out and say that a woman love her children maybe more than her husband. Mm. Now, that's not gospel. That's just me talking because they share what? The same blood. Now, spouses, they may share the same spiritual and connection and a bond, but ain't nothing like blood. How many know you'll kill somebody for blood? <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus says he's about to die, about to go off the scene. What's going to happen to my mama? Hallelujah. Who can I leave her in the hands with to know she's going to be all right? It's bad enough that she allowed me to function in my gift. 
We're almost done, y'all. Almost ready for worship. It's bad enough that she watched me get spit on. Can y'all imagine what Mary went through? Going to the market and they talking about Jesus on the down low? Oh yeah, that's that, that's that person that, that, that sits down with thieves. He sits down with sinners. Can you imagine the gossip that was at the water cooler in Jerusalem? Hallelujah. Mary's son always talking about... Y'all y'all don't hear me, amen. Has anybody ever talked about you and you heard it to your face? Or heard it, amen, gossip? How I many know that's a hurtful thing? It's a hurtful thing to be hurt, hallelujah. And then you got to recover, amen. And then she, well, was she sure whether or not Jesus was really called? Hmm. Have you ever questioned whether or not you've been called before? Am I the only one in the room? Did God really call me? God, are you sure you want to use, amen, me? And Mary had to deal with all of this stuff. But in her dealings, hallelujah, watch this. And I wrote down some characteristics that I believe Mary had. And this is for everybody in the room. Amen. Whether you're feminine or you're masculine. Amen. You got to develop some qualities mm, that's going to move beyond what people say about you. Hello, somebody. You got to develop, amen, some strong Tough skin to where when people talk about you and they laugh in your face, amen, you still, what, can keep it moving. The Bible says what? Shake the dust off your feet and keep on moving. Hallelujah. Because this life, amen, is too tough to stay stuck in trials. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This life is too tough to stay stuck in trials. Hmm. One characteristic I believe that Mary had was she had to be a role model. Mm -hmm. Charles Barkley said, I ain't no role model. But guess what? Some of us are role models. People watch what you do. Hallelujah. You can't act a fool. Hallelujah. Mm, you know how many times I want to act a fool and cut up? Oh, but it's something about the Holy Ghost, amen, that keeps me wrapped up together. Boy, I wish I had a church to preach to you. Hallelujah. I remember at the funeral of little Tracy, hallelujah. Not that I'm still grieving, but I remember, amen, amen, somebody said something horrible on the, on, the, on the funeral day. And I stayed glued to my chair because I wanted to be integral. And I, didn't wanna, I wanted everybody to know who the, the real fool is. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to say nothing. My family ain't going to say nothing with me. Did I say fool? Yes, I said Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Role model. You are a role model to somebody. Amen. Somebody watch you every day. Let me hurry. Hallelujah. The second one is, if you're writing down, amen, there's a source of love and affection that folk gravitate to you from. For. I've got kids that I've mentored. Now that they know I'm at Simpson Park, they come, they come in the place and be like, Coach Tracy! How many of folk watch you? And they learn from you. They're listening to you. How many know you can't let them down? Amen. Number three, patient. You got to learn how to be patient with people. Let alone be patient with yourself. Number four, forgiving. You got to learn how to be forgiving. I can imagine Mary, she had to forgive all those soldiers. Y'all remember when they, they pierced Jesus? Worship, worship. They pierced Jesus where? In the side. Can you imagine Mary? I, I hear the gospel of Southern Ears. So this may be too old for some of y'all. But, but that's my son hanging on the cross. He died for me. That's the song that was sang. But can you imagine, amen, she had to have restraint and not want to go off? Because they pierced him in his side. They're gambling for Jesus' clothes. While he's hanging on the cross for you and I. Mm. The next one. Respectable. You got to be respectable. How I many know a mother, she's going to regain her integrity? Tutor. Let me, let me hurry. 
a tutor. She got to be optimistic. She has to pour, amen, into her children. What are you, I, that's what I've always heard. Thank you, Lord, and I, and I honor, amen, my wife for this because she's always said to our children, what are you going to be when you get out of school? You're going to have to do something. She's always said that to them so that when graduation comes, there is no excuse of, of, of I don't know my identity. How many know you got to put in your children what? Their identity because they don't know. Hallelujah. Strong and resilient. Mary had to be discipled herself. She was a friend. Three more and I'm moving to close. She was humble. She was funny at times. <laughs> she was flexible. And she was talented. Many more, but let me let me hurry. What verse? 28. 28 says, and after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Your Bible goes on to say, everybody standing, your Bible goes on to say that when he appeared unto the disciples, and we don't own the rights to this music. Your Bible says that Jesus said, John, behold your mother. But he was talking about what? His own mother, right? Somebody say right if you're with me in the scriptures. But she was le he was leaving, amen. And I, and I want, I, 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 it seems like we're divided in the spirit right now. But let's gather our thoughts and our minds in right now. Some of y'all got food on your mind. <laughs> Some of y'all trying to leave early. <laughs> but stay wrapped in the spirit. Some of y'all about ready to do offering. But I need us to stay locked into this moment. Watch this. It's going to bless you. How many know you can't rush out of moments? Jesus didn't rush his death. Y'all hear me? This is for somebody. He didn't rush his death. But he endured. How I many know endure mean you gotta take it? Y'all still ain't saying that. You gotta take it. You gotta endure trials. Hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta take it because it's gonna make you tougher. Hallelujah. How I many know you can't run from trial? Because you're going to run, what, right into a bigger trial. Your Bible says trials come, what, to make you strong. Not to tear you down, but to build you up. Somebody say, look, help me get built up. Come on, say it to your neighbor. Look around at somebody in the room say, help me get built up. Come on, some of y'all ain't doing it. Look across the road, tell somebody. I ain't going to move to some of y'all do it. Look at somebody on this side. Just tell them. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Jesus says, Jesus says, behold, take care of your mother. And I don't know why I'm stuck here, but take care of your mother. So you only get one mother. He says, take care of my mother. Hallelujah. You want to know why that Jesus left Mary in the hands of the disciples? Because he knew they were going to take care of what? Of his, of his mother. How many know ministry is supposed to balance you? Ministry puts you in a position to where you can see God and hear from God. But still in ministry, what? You got to navigate your own life. He didn't put her in nobody's hands but the disciples. And guess what? I could have preached any message today. But I wanted to hang this message on. Amen. Put them in the hands of the ministry. 
And yes, ministry has hurt people. Sure it has. From the pulpit where? To the door. People hurt people. Hurt people what? Hurt people. But how many know it's time to what? Take care of your mother. And if in spiritual, if we had time, we could go real deep. Amen. That's just not your spiritual mother. Take care of folk in the ministry. Do unto others as you have them do what? Do unto you. We have forgotten how to serve. We have forgotten how to love. All we know is Mr. Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. But why should not we take care of those that have labored in the ministry for the gospel's sake? We got to get back to those times where, amen, we, we, we don't want selfish stuff, but we're pouring out, hallelujah, instead of wanting all the time. God said he'll make you what, the lender and not the borrower. Jesus said to John, take care. Take care of her. And your Bible says that he appeared... Now, this is after the three days. He appeared to the disciples. Guess who was there? You should know it by now. Guess who was there? His mama. He charged them, take care of physical matters. Now, I charge you today. It took me a long time to get here, but we're here. I charge you today. Take care of your business. Who am I talking to today? I know I'm talking to somebody on this camera. Take care of your business. Guess what? Mike, Iron Mike, God ain't going to handle everything for us. There are some things what you got to handle on your own, real thing. Hallelujah. Use emotional intelligence. Some of you have never heard that before. I'm going to tell you what it is. Do the right thing. Emotional intelligence. Sometimes we operate on choice overload. All these choices, I gotta do all that. No, do the right thing. Focus on the main thing. Jesus says, "What? Take care of your of Mary. Take care of my mama. This is so vital. Think about it deeper. Take care of the people that's right in front of you." Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Take care of the people that's in your circle. Make sure you love on those that's right by you. How many know Jesus did not come to save the whole world? Your Bible says God so loved the world that he gave. He knew those were going to reject him. He knew those were not going to turn around and follow him. That's why he put the earth on the disciples. Take care of my mom. Because I trust you. You've been walking with me. Thank you, Caleb. Very beautiful, profound song. Amen. You've been walking with me. Take care. And watch this as I close. Jesus rose to the stature of being greater than Mary. Even though Mary birthed Jesus. And at the end of his demise, he puts humility back in his proper place. Take care. Because she took care of me. Woo, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We've completed our assignment for the day. You told us to give the word in season and out of season. Father, let us take care of those that are right by us. Same blood, same spirit. Amen. Oneness, affection. Hallelujah. Those in ministry, take care of each other. Hallelujah. We're living in a world where folk don't care any mother, any, any, any more. Mothers that have died. Hallelujah. Folk that have come home for the weekend found out that family member had died before Mother's Day. 
Father, we realize we're living in a cold, cold world. Lord, we pray, oh God, your spirit, Father, would just be on the earth. Your spirit would cover us. And we don't own the rights to this music. But Lord, cover us today. Lord, help us to take care of one another. Let us to take care of home first. Hallelujah. Before we go to Jerusalem and the outer parts of the earth. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.